at the dog park with my pups, but I wanted to quickly load the Canon Sure Shot Twin. I don't know, Twin Prima or Prima Twin, some bullshit like that. Bought some $40 Fujifilm 400 film, just because it's all they had at Rite Aid, that's where I went. You can still get some film at your pharmacy stores. So I do end up taking some shots in the parking lot of the 28 millimeter focal length and then the 48 millimeter focal length standing in the same exact spot just so you can see both focal lengths that this camera is able to provide for you. I think most people would expect that when you turn it on it would first default to the 28 millimeter but it doesn't. It defaults to the 48 millimeter which is kind of nice if you like that focal length like I do. So if I turn it off turn it back on goes back to 48 millimeter then this button here that goes from wide to telephoto to get your preferred 28 millimeter just something to note Canon Prima Twin has a dual lens. It has a 28 millimeter wide and then it has a 48 millimeter tele. The 28 millimeter is at an f4, so similar to the Yashica T4 with the 3.5. And then at the more tele portrait style 48 millimeter, it's at an f6.5. So you end up losing a lot of that, like, kind of bokeh blur. It's a definitely a fun camera to have with the two options of lenses. Unfortunately, when you are shooting at the 48 millimeter, your largest f-stop is the 6.5. It's still great to have available to me in such a small medium package to get the same exact focal length of 28 and and 48 millimeter on the minolta maximum 5 you'd have to bring this with you the full body and then you would also have to have the 50 millimeter in your bag as well just to be able to switch and then you have to take off lenses and then swap out which is a lot easier to do on the canon prima twin lazy fogging up the mercedes just want to be with my baby because i'm gonna eat it like take out after i take you out to a little reservation i'm gonna take you to my bed we can get a little while baby no domestication we can make love and all the above no intoxication want to see her again yes or again no i can't wait uh. With having the 28 and the 48 millimeter dual lenses, this camera is very versatile. It's actually called the WT28 in Japan, which stands for World Traveler. So very intended for traveling. But I also think the WT is a play off of wide tele. So it's a great everyday camera if with good lighting. You may struggle indoors a little or at sunrise and sunset. But other than that, this is a really good option to have with you. Prices on these cameras are pretty fair, I would say. You can find them on eBay from like $30 all the way up to $70 on the higher end. 
and that's being shipped from Japan, so it's not a bad deal. I definitely recommend this camera for those of us looking for a dual lens camera like this, or if you're looking for like a zoom lens camera. It's just not our time, baby. Tell me where you've been lately. I'll shut down, turn down, baby. When we link up, go crazy. We go MIA, drinking IPA, we get hazy. Smoking weed, lazy. Fogging up the Mercedes. Just wanna be with my baby. Cause I'ma eat it like takeout after I take you out. Due to its size, it's a very comfortable camera to hold and use, but it's not that heavy. It looks like it would be heavier than these cameras, but it feels pretty lightweight and easily fits in my back pocket. So now for some top shots. My first top shot is of coffee at the dog park. It feels very sharp if you look at coffee, if you look at the trees in the middle, and then you end up losing some of the sharpness on the edges of the frame, but that's pretty typical with wider lenses it doesn't feel like it's shot off of a point and shoot style camera it almost feels like it's something i could have got with an slr camera the second and third photo are of the life-size hot wheels truck that i came across i ended up driving past it pulling over and taking some photos of it so when i showed up i noticed the crows just circling above it and i ended up trying my best to include the crows and the car without including the post very much, but it ends up being part of the photo. So if I ended up using this on to display somewhere or post somewhere, I would probably try to crop in and make that photo a little bit more interesting. The second photo of the two of the Hot Wheels car, I really enjoy the mood of the photo. I really like the nice dark ridge colors of the photo from the rain and the car ends up standing out because it's white. So the fourth top photo is of the boat tower. It's my second shot of that boat tower. I end up liking this shot more because I end up including the trees kind of on the edges and then the angle's different and the sky behind the boat is a little bit nicer. I wish I could rearrange the clouds behind it, but I can't. I would have to include some AI to get that better sky behind it. The fifth and sixth are another combo of my postcard series. It's a wide shot of the of the trees and the shadows I end up creating. There's a lot of layers again. There's a lot to look at. And in the first photo, your, your eyes are really guided by the shadows and the light in the frame. And the second shot, I really like how the eye is kind of highlighted in that corner from that trailer and the overall square framing of that shot. Again, very postcardy like I am, but ends up being a top photo for me. So that's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, you can go ahead and comment down below. And as always, guys, happy shooting. <laughs>